Good morning. morning. I'm going to wait for people to come in. Come on up to the front. I knew that New Year's Day wasn't going to be a huge crowd. But since we're doing a lessons and carols, there's a lot of readings we'll hear today and a fair amount of singing. At least I personally have always found it's easier to sing if there's more people around you. So I'm not saying you have to move to the front, but if you feel more comfortable, the singing will sound more full. Is that correct, would you say, Jonathan? Yes. Well, Happy New Year's to you all. It is a beautiful new year. We have um, our opening blessing and new year blessing will kind of incorporate all of us seeking the blessing of God, who of course has blessed the past year and now 2023. I just want to share with you, one of our um, good friends and former members has passed away, Lois Wolf. And some of you may have known her, maybe not, but she was quite well known throughout the school districts in here as she had worked for, was Whitefish Bay, correct? And there'll be more information about how we remember and celebrate her life as that planning is kind of happening. It may be in a few months, but we hold Lois's family and Dodie just in our prayers and the community as well, as she has touched so many people. So as we look to the new year, I know many of us think about years past and families and friends who have been with us, but we also have the promise and blessing of Christ with us always. Our lessons and carols today in the season of Christmas will focus on, on Luke 2. If you look at your cover today, there's a quote from Luke 2. For unto us is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We'll be hearing readings that especially focus on Jesus as Savior, Jesus as the Christ or Messiah, God's anointed or chosen one, and then Jesus as Lord. We hear those titles for Jesus a lot, right? And sometimes we think, well, what's the difference? What does, that, what does all that mean? So our readings will focus on that. I'm just going to say a little bit about each of them as we get into those as the service goes on. And then our hymns will also reflect Jesus as Savior, Christ, and Lord. I invite you to stand as you're able for the blessing of the new year. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, you have placed us in a world of space and time. You have been a present source of hope and life throughout the events of the past year. You have walked with us daily in times of adversity and prosperity. Grant that in this new year, we may know you more fully. Let us see your love at work in the light of the event that gives us joy forever, the coming of your Son. Amen. Amid the troubles and the fears of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our lack of faith and trust. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive our neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive our selfish and, and complacency. With great joy, the angels proclaimed do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord, in Jesus who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. Our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together the prayer of the day printed near the bottom of page four of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus 
to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Before we continue with the reading, again, our, we're going to move through some of the titles that Jesus has. And certainly God and the Holy Trinity has a multitude of titles. But today, given the scripture and especially focused on Luke 2, we'll be hearing about Jesus as our Savior. That's what we're going to hear right now. And then also Christ and Lord. And when we think of Savior, you hear that word save. Listen in the readings for the word salvation or Savior. How, what other attributes? You'll hear about strength and might. And certainly, we can try our hardest to save ourselves, to save our family, to save country, nation, whatever it might be, economy. But in truth, it is Jesus that saves and gathers all people into God's kingdom today and forever. So we hear about Jesus as our Savior from Isaiah first, and then we'll hear from Matthew. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Again, as we think about Jesus as our Savior, we're going to hear in Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus. We, here's where we hear about Joseph. And we'll be hearing as Joseph kind of struggles, who is betrothed to Mary, but Mary is expecting and no, Joseph is not the biological father. And he, if you think about it, is trying to save his face, save his reputation. And yet it is the angel Gabriel, the Lord's messenger, that speaks to Joseph also, as he spoke to Mary and many other people, and, and reminds him that it is indeed God who saves and will work through all situations to bring peace, comfort, joy and hope in all situations, even those that come with adversity, challenges. Jesus saves. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, we know what that means. She was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when Joseph had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you, Joseph, are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. For unto you is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Christ we can think of also as Messiah or anointed one, God's chosen one. We're going to hear from Isaiah 61. Jonathan's going to read that in just a moment. And we think about Isaiah, who, who prophesied to a great people lost, the, the nations of Israel, lost and exiled, and hoping again that someone, a Christ, the Messiah, one of the great kings of Israel, as they were all given that title, Messiah, mm -hmm. would not just be their salvation, but would also lead them into prosperity, 
each and every day of their life. Jesus' coming is the prophecy that keeps on giving. We hear it in Isaiah, but then Matthew and Luke and others take up that Jesus is the Christ, God's anointed one, that is different than all of the kings, the other messiahs in the past, but comes differently and more vulnerable to show what true power is expressed through love, that Christ is with us, God's chosen one, every day. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. For unto you is born a Savior who is Christ, the Lord. We hear that word Lord a lot with Jesus, and it's always a capital L, if you notice that. There's also Lord, lowercase l. We can understand Lord with that lowercase l as being a head of a household or a home or a region or even a people. But Jesus comes as capital L, Lord, who takes his home and resides with God, his Father, at the right side and the Holy Spirit. Jesus comes to us as Lord is a gift to us to say that Jesus has come to his own, to his own people, Lord of Lords. And it's a reminder to us that we are under God's and Jesus' Lordship. We are his people. We find our way following the Lord who leads us, who leads us, who is not just Lord, but Messiah, Christ, and also Savior. You can think of Lord today if you think about this worship service as you are sent on your way, as Christ being Lord of all creation, and we are just blessed to be a part of that creation. As we begin this new year, we think of Lord Jesus with us, and, in, in, in so much so that it has worked its way into our liturgy. The Lord be with you. The Lord is with you. 
Right. That is such a reminder that the Lord Christ who comes to us in the most unbelievable, most vulnerable way, a little baby Jesus, right, comes to us and is our Lord and gives himself to us for the world. We continue with the reading from Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the entire temple. I love that image. Seraphs, those winged creatures, were in attendance above him, and each had six wings. With two, they covered their face, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one seraph called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the hosts being all of God's created. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke, incense, right? Nothing's on fire. And I said, woe is me. This is Isaiah. I, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the king and the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all. Then one of those seraphs flew to me, and holding a live hot coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, the seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. That is a beautiful, beautiful reminder of what God is doing. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am. Send me. A reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to, to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. I invite you to stand for the prayers. They're responsive, so you'll find the responsive um, parts in bold. This is on page 9. It is you, loving God, who lights our path with truth. Your word, Jesus, is truth. In his light, draw all to the manger. To gather in wonder with the shepherds. In his light, draw all to the manger. To deal in reverence with the wise ones. In his light, draw all to the manger. To sing for joy with the angels. In the brightness of his life. To be the darkness of injustice, poverty, and hunger in the world. It is you, loving God, who meets us on our way. In the light of Jesus, show the world the way of life. Amen. For what else does this faith community pray for today and this new year?
Hear our prayer. We commend our sister in Christ, Lois Wolf, to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Mary Lou, who has been hospitalized and is home recovering from a pulmonary embolism and heart concerns as well. Strengthen her and her family in this faith community as we care for her in the distance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you know our prayers, those that are spoken and those that dwell in our hearts. Dwell with us as we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus, Savior, Christ, and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you all. Let's take a moment or two to share a sign of peace with each other. Peace, everyone. Peace, Melissa. God of wonder, in Jesus we behold the light of the world come near. As you have come among us now, send us out in joy, hastening us to share the good news of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through the Spirit dwelling among us now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I just have a few little, little things to share. If you um, purchased a poinsettia plant, thank you so much for adorning the sanctuary. They need TLC, <laughs> and they're not going to do well for another week in here. So if you bought one, we do have, a, uh, I think, about three extras, too. Please feel free to take them. And what we might do too is if we have extras, which we always do, we will um, probably give them to some of our homebound members. If you can help with that, maybe if you could give me an email like today or tomorrow and I will contact you. You probably have about four or five people that would, would really like one of these plants, I'm hoping. Um, conversations on being well, it's on your last page. That is beginning. We kick that off in worship next Sunday. Wellness of something, of course, we think about a lot in the new year, but it is not just about our physical wellness. It's the wellness of the congregation. How are we well in using spiritual gifts? How are we well in using gifts and currencies, not just of money, but also of leadership, relationship, time and place, and truth? And I found this, this is a gift from Mary Lou. It's from the Kaleidoscope Institute. Um, it is one of their, they commissioned an artist to make this. It, you can come and take a look, we're gonna frame it. It kind of looks like a blue swirl and it has these different currencies that I just mentioned. Relationship, leadership, truth, time and place, money. Um, and we are going to frame this, but it is going to be something that we'll see over the next five weeks in our conversations of being well, especially on Sundays in worship. We'd like to think about it through scripture and through small group, through the spirit working and talking through and nudging all of us together in, in these areas of wellness, how we are doing and where the spirit will be leading us, not just this year, but perhaps in the future for our mission and ministry together. Churches are at a critical time, and I see it as a time of opportunity. These conversations on being well is such an opportunity for us to check in with each other, to take the pulse of the congregation through the Holy Spirit, and to send us into mission. If you have not signed up for one of the small groups, you can see, I need like a Vanna White, you can see this highlighted yellow area. These are the various times that the small groups are meeting. And we'd love each person, like if, if Shar, if you sign up for Wednesdays at 10 a.m. on Zoom, it'd be great if you could stay with that group for the five weeks. But if one week you can't do it, you can also switch to a different group. 
So if you have questions about that, you can talk to me. Who else can we talk to? To Alita, to Danette, to Walt, to Carrie? There's a bunch, of, they're all on this side. I don't know why. <laughs> they're all on this side today in a cluster. It's wonderful. But we really would like um, the whole congregation guests to be a part of this too. So um, you can sign up online or you can talk to one of these wonderful people and they can help you with that as well. There's in-person small group meetings. There's also meetings over Zoom. Alita. Can you pick out Wednesday morning? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wonderful. Well, again, so if that time works for you, just sign up and we will work out all those details. The last thing, nope, two things. I kept speaking of the currency of truth. Um, this Friday is January 6th. What does that mean? It's epiphany. It's always epiphany on January 6th. So we have this wonderful tradition of having a worship service with Hephatha, and there's been a few other congregations that are kind of, they're in different places, so we know that we will be meeting at 6 p.m. to worship the word and the light going out into the world with our friends at Hephatha. All the Greater Milwaukee Synod um, congregations are invited. Where should you be at 6 p.m. on Friday, the 6th? At Hephatha, the choir singing, it is quite a celebration. So if you can be a, um, somewhere on Friday thinking, oh, Friday evening, I don't have anything to do, you do. 6 p.m. at Hephatha Lutheran, and we will send out addresses and announcements about that. And the last thing, you know we had some flooding events here, right? This is why a couple of months back we had a reading from Noah about the flood, and I said, no, we're not. I just can't go there. <laughs> but we're having a new crock in some pump installed pretty much kind of like where um, under the parent child room is, downstairs in the boys' bathroom. It's a good place for a sump pump. I don't know. It's just the best location. So that's happening this week. Steve, thank you so much for all of the appointments, all of the meetings, all of the meeting with contractors. And you know how that goes. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. Thank you for orchestrating this. And um, yes, I mean, it's... Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is why I colored my hair. So um, yes, it's happening this week. They will excavate a hole in the basement and put a sump pump so that when flooding happens, more can be sent, more of the water can be sent away from the building. So thank you to everyone, and I know not everybody's here, for all of the patience, the prayers, the support that you have given because we've had too, too many floods in the past several months here. Anything else that needs to be said about that? No. It'll be loud, don't come here. <laughs> right, right, there's been a lot of moving parts. So thank you for that, and thank you everyone. I invite you to stand for the benediction, as you're able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you and look upon you with favor and give you peace, especially for this new year and peace throughout our communities and world. Amen.